At the very end of the game, we see the prototype killing Catnap, despite Catnap being his biggest follower. This came as a big surprise, as Catnap seemed to be used as a vessel to perform the actions that the prototype saw fit. So, why would he kill him, despite Catnap surviving the electric hand and seemingly being able to live on, still? Well, there are several theories or thoughts that come to mind. But before that, just a quick summary on who Catnap is and his connection to the prototype. It all starts with an orphan child called Theodore Gramble, who just like many others were kept in the daycare, randomly selected to be experimented on to become the new living dolls. Through a couple of tapes in chapter 3, we learn that the scientists were extremely cruel and downright sadistic, not only performing the experiments for science and discovery, but some even seemed as if they enjoyed hurting and torturing them for the sake of it. Theodore, being an impressionable child, becomes influenced by the prototype to tamper with the security systems and eventually open the security door beneath the factory to let the prototype escape from the labs hidden deep under Playtime Co. factory. Using a grab pack in order to open the security door, he successfully does so, but the grab pack malfunctions and shocks Theodore, which puts him on the brink of death. The prototype seeing Theodore is about to die and if he doesn't act fast enough in order to save him, he chooses to sacrifice his freedom and compromise his whereabouts by taking Theodore to the scientist so that they can save him. Thanks to the prototype's sacrifice, Theodore is saved, but he loses his freedom, a sure escape, as all the security systems were down and he could easily run away. But instead, he becomes imprisoned in the lab once again, being under even more stringent observation. The scientists, working with what they can, choose to perform a surgery on Theodore and transform him into the large catnap as a mascot under the larger buddies initiative. Theodore, who is now catnap, at first acts obedient and does what the organization asks him to do, but eventually, having limited contact with the prototype, he becomes more and more influenced by him, changing his view on the organization, wanting to escape and rebel against them, wanting freedom, which the organization depicts their cruelty and dismissal towards the children, and how they don't even count them as human and just mere test subjects. Okay, this is Catnap, uh, experiment number 1188. What's his real name again? Ah, okay. <clears throat> hey, uh, Theo. How you doing, bud? Normally, I'd have Dr. Sawyer do this, but he's, uh, out, let's say. So you got me until they find his replacement. First off, congrats. This is officially your fourth year in your new body, and you've made some real progress, pal. I was told that when you and the other smiling critters, you know, dog day, picky picky, yada 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 were added into play care that you weren't really getting along too well with the kids like everybody else was but look at you now the kids love you and that red smoke i mean that's fantastic isn't it is his uh voice thingy still broken theo nobody's gonna save you this prison is where you belong We'll let you out here and there to go see the kids in play care, but your home is here. And as for the prototype, his home is in the labs. This is your life now. Get used to it. This leads to Theodore finding himself to have become a monster and treated like an enslaved monster. And he does what monsters do best when they are in those situations, helping the prototype to rebel against the evil organization. And in an event they call the Hour of Joys, mass massacring anyone that they find, including good people that even adopted children and the ones who cared about them, but also the evil scientists. Eventually, Catnap's devotion towards the prototype takes a more sinister turn, with him becoming obsessed with the prototype, seeing him as his heavenly god who brought about their freedom from their cruel oppressors. He became so crazy and insane that he killed any doll or toy, essentially being children who didn't perform actions or didn't do what he saw fitting, worshipping the prototype. 
This brings us to the current time where Catnap kills anyone he sees as a threat or a heretic, not worshipping and following the prototype. So according to this, the prototype must be the evil orchestrator overseeing all of this cruelty and atrocities, right? Or is it actually something he wanted? Or did Catnap go too far for even someone like the prototype to approve of? Keep that in mind, we'll get back to it soon. If we consider Catnap was a close character to the prototype and he approved of all of his actions, killing him would seem like a complete betrayal. Unless he saw the misery and pain Catnap is in after suffering a severe shock, even being engulfed in fire, which he took pity on him and killed him as a mercy kill to free him from his pain and the miserable life that he is living. So you could potentially say the prototype mercy killed Catnap because he cared about him and couldn't see him suffering in pain. But a more sinister theory is that the prototype is completely evil and only cares about himself, having seen enough evil to have any heart anymore, and anyone or anything standing in his way for achieving his goals is seen as an obstacle which needs to be removed. That could be even said for weakness or any weak follower which could be useless in his eyes. So Catnap failing to defeat the protagonist in a battle and sustaining such severe injuries could portray that he is purely evil and doesn't like weakness, hence why he killed Catnap, despite him being a disciple of him, a vessel who performed all actions of the prototype. Or maybe another theory could be that he collects parts of larger toys to add to his own body. We saw him collect Mummy Longleg's corpse after she died and here he kills then collects the corpse of Catnap. So maybe being a prototype he can add or replace body parts. We even see through the shrine that was made for him by Catnap that his model was made from different toys dolls and even human skeleton, which could be a hint of what he actually looks like, a mix and match of different toys. Also in the tape, we hear him sounding very different as if he has voice boxes of different toys, having different voices, as if emitting from radios or different early versions of toys voice boxes. So maybe he collects different body parts to improve his body, which is a very likely possibility. But something that would conflict with the evil theory that the prototype is purely evil and hates weakness is that he actually sacrificed his own freedom to save Theodore, a human child. He also organized an event in which he could kill the deserving oppressors in order to free all the suffering toys and dolls who were not only mentally tortured and controlled but also physically tortured as we can confirm from the tapes. Maybe, just maybe, the prototype is not as evil as we have been led to believe by Poppy, that he is the orchestrator of all evil and pain and misery in the factory now. Maybe he actually deeply cared about the toys, dolls, orphans, and certain adults who weren't involved in the experiments and the cruelty. In the tape where he is being tortured, we hear him in a very sensible way questioning a scientist why he tortures him, something that is not necessary to which the scientist explains that he enjoys it and finds it exciting, depicting how sadistic and evil they are. Log code 24459. In relation, experiment 1006. The prototype. Stubborn as it is, and always silent with each passing session, I'm still uncovering fresh data nonetheless. Today's discovery. End of log. Ready to talk now, are you? I possess a question. Go ahead. Do you feel anything? This question referred to you once. You stick us. Feed us. Tear our flesh. Do you feel it? There's a secret inside you, 1006. Valuable beyond all measure. I cut and prod and burn at it. And I get closer with each session. 
so speak, who don't, finance will give in. Regardless, I learn something new about you every day. It excites me. Thank you. You thank me. Absolutely. I learn something new about you every day. So, if anything, the prototype seemed to be a more logical and rational being, someone who wanted justice for the suffering people and toys. Perhaps seeing Catnap descended into insanity, killing and torturing all the toys who didn't do as he specifically asked, wasn't the prototype's intention after all, and he didn't approve of it. But Catnap just completely lost the plot and his purpose becoming psychotic. Maybe killing him was both out of sympathy and justice, taking accountability that he has become such an evil entity, as after all, he was the one who saved him and allowed him to do such things. He deeply cared for Theodore and it pained the prototype seeing him becoming the very thing that he fought against. So killing him essentially freed him from the pain and trauma that he experienced, becoming a such, always on the edge, wanting to kill, being scared and becoming a monster. If you think about it, maybe the prototype is not as bad as we think, as he could easily attack the protagonist in both occasions when he collected the corpses of mummy Longlegs and Catnap, but he decided not to. If we also compare Theodore's arc from beginning to his end, he had a very symbolic death. The prototype saved Theodore when he got shocked from a grab pack that he used to free him and this time, he got shocked again from a grab pack and severely injured, but instead, the prototype killed him, which could mean he regrets saving him, as Catnap transformed into a bloodthirsty murderer, killing everyone in the prototype's name, even though the prototype doesn't approve of the killing. The prototype saw what he became and took accountability and took the very life that he saved as Theodore became something much more dark and evil. It's very ironic that he took the very life in the same way that he saved it. What are your thoughts and what theory do you think is the most likely? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, it's been your host, Dar, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.